This is chapter three, lecture E, cell growth and reproduction. The cell cycle is a very important series of changes that goes on all throughout the lifespan of the cell. And you can see it in this next diagram here. It's shown in this pie chart that we have. And you can see in the green area, the large majority of the cell cycle is interphase. And interphase is uh, thought of as the stage between cell division. So if we look at the word inner, it kind of looks like intermission almost. So it's between the time period of cell division. However, the term is somewhat misleading because it's a very metabolically active time period. Very, very important for the cell. So it's very metabolically active. It's a growth phase. And it's subdivided into the G1 phase the S phase and the G2 phase. And the G1 phase is the time period when there's going to be lots of proteins that are synthesized. And it's also the most variable time period, so it can vary quite significantly in different cells from several minutes to several hours. And one of the most important things that actually happens at the end of G1 is there are centrioles that are created. And the centrioles are very important for directing the division of the DNA. Uh, so for directing mitosis. And if we look down here in the circled area, these are the centrioles. So remember, one centrosome is made up of two centrioles. During the S phase, this is the synthesis phase. And this is going to be when there are new histones that are created. And the histones are very important because they help to organize the chromatin. Uh, the histones are going to be made and then assembled into the chromatin. So the chromatin is going to be the form of DNA that's present during interphase. And then during the G2 phase, the last phase here of interphase, this is when there are a lot of important enzymes that are made and other important proteins that are going to be need, needed for the mitosis phase. So during the cell cycle, we have these three parts of interphase that are important to be aware of. Uh, then during the mitotic phase, the M phase, there are two phases. Mitosis is going to be the division of the nucleus itself. And that is very, very important because it ensures that the uh, DNA is going to be equally separated to the daughter cells. And then cytokinesis is going to be the division of the cytoplasm. And so some, some textbooks will actually refer to cytokinesis as a part of telophase, but um, it can also be classified as this very last part, the division of the cytoplasm, cytokinesis. Now, cell division is going to be controlled by a lot of different enzymes and different chemicals. Um, they're not too important to worry about. The important thing to know is the major parts that happen during the cell cycle. Our next slide here is showing interphase. And interphase, the important thing to notice is that the nuclear envelope is still intact. So it has not yet broken apart, which is what you're going to see during mitosis. The other important thing to notice is that chromatin is the uncondensed DNA. And it's going to condense into chromosomes during mitosis. So the nu nuclear envelope is still intact. Um, and the centrosomes, remember a centrosome is two centrioles, and it has not yet spread apart to the poles, which is what we're going to see during mitosis. Now during the S phase, during the synthesis phase of interphase, we have DNA replication. And it's very important for you to make sure you're checking out, you're watching the A&P flicks that are included in Mastering A&P. They're really, really important, really excellent. So in order for DNA to replicate, what we first see here is that there is an important enzyme that is called helicase. And the helicase is going to be unwinding the double helix, almost like uh, if, if you imagine a unzipping a zipper. This is what's going to happen. It exposes the bases. And then there's going to be copying of each of these strands. And what forms are these replication bubbles, an area 
where a replication fork is found and the bubbles are going to expose the DNA and so there are templates. We see a template strand right here and the complementary nucleotides are then going to be added by a special enzyme here. And so the bottom line is when the DNA is replicated, there's going to be an exact copy of the original strands. And the important thing to know is that adenine is always going to pair with cytosine, and that cytosine is always going to pair with guanine. So our next slide here is showing the first phase of mitosis. This is what we're going to concentrate on for the next part of this mini lecture. And so during early prophase here, what we start to see is that the duplicated chromosomes, they're going to have identical threads, which are called sister chromatids, and they're held together by a region called the centromere. And the centromere is going to be where the chrom sister chromatids are going to later separate. But the big important characteristics of early prophase are that the nuclear envelope, which you see here, starts to disappear. So the nuclear envelope, which is also called the nuclear membrane, is going to start to disappear. And also, the mitotic spindle is going to start to form. And the region that controls the mitotic spindle is what is called the aster. The aster is sort of the organizing area where we find the centrioles. So the centrioles, remember, are going to direct the formation of this microtubule spindle. The mitotic spindle was formed by these microtubules, part of the cytoskeleton. In late prophase, we see the final disappearance of the nuclear envelope, so there's very little that's going to be left over of the nuclear envelope. We also see the organization of kinetochores, and the kinetochores are going to be at each of the centromeres, and if you, if you look closely at the slide, they're sort of the point of attachment for the chromosomes. So since these chromosomes need to be pulled apart to each pole, it's very important that they're organized along this microtubule apparatus. We also see the, um, the spindle completely formed by late prophase. Following late prophase is metaphase. Uh, the prefix meta means middle, and this is important because it's referring to the metaphyseal plate or the equatorial plate. So in this case, the chromosomes are going to cluster right at the midline here. And so in our next phase, which is the third phase of anaphase, we have the um, sister chromatids now. So you can see the daughter chromatids. Um, the daughter chromatids now are going to be pulled towards each of the poles. And this is going to be the kind of the beginning of the two future daughter cells. So these are the daughter chromosomes, which will lead to the actual daughter cells. And then telophase, followed by cytokinesis. So you can either think of cytokinesis as following telophase, as a separate stage, or as a part of telophase. Either way, it's not really important. But um, what is important is to remember that telophase is the opposite of prophase. So during prophase, you saw the disappearance of the nuclear envelope. However, during telophase, we're going to start to see the reappearance of the nuclear envelope. So that's one of the important things to remember here for telophase, is that it's the opposite of prophase. So you can see the reformation of the nuclear envelope. We see the very beginning of it here, but by the completion of telophase, we will have the reformation of the nuclear envelopes. Also, the centrosome, the two centrals are sort of returning to their original location where they were during interphase. The other event that is going to happen is the beginning of the cleavage furrow. Now, the cleavage furrow 
is actually a contractile ring, and it's actually formed by a part of the cytoskeleton called the actin filaments. And in this case, they are going to pinch off the cytoplasm to create the formation of two new daughter cells. So these daughter cells now are going to have the exact genetic makeup that the original parent cell had. So if the original parent cell had the normal amount of chromosomes that we have, which is 46 chromosomes, the daughter cell would end up having 46 as well. There is another type of uh, cell division that is called meiosis, and we're not going to talk about that until anatomy and physiology too. That only occurs in sex cells. So this is the slide that you have in your textbook. It's a, um, actually a focus figure that's in your textbook, so it's very important to use this to study from. And again, you can see that during interphase, this is a cell that is metabolically active. So this is the time period that is going to be subdivided into G1, S, and G2. It's the time period when more proteins are made, when there's more cent centrioles that are made. But you can see that um, there is the nuclear envelope is still intact at this point. And it's important to remember that DNA is called chromatin during interphase. During prophase, we have early and late prophase, the chromatin is going to start to condense into chromosomes. So the chromosomes are very condensed and this is important because it's much easier to now manipulate the DNA so that the sister chromatids can be pulled apart to the poles. Notice we have the organization of the mitotic spindle which is made up of microtubules. We have the disappearance of the nuclear envelope, one of the main characteristics of the of prophase. Metaphase plate um, is located in metaphase, and so where it's the it's where the chromosomes are actually in the very middle of the cell. The daughter chromosomes are now going to be pulled apart to anaphase towards each of these poles. So the organization of the poles are from the centrioles. And then finally, in telophase, remember this is sort of opposite of prophase. So it's the time period when the contractile ring is going to form, which is what's called the cleavage furrow. And the other thing, again, is that the nuclear envelope is going to be reforming during telophase.